solid ground I feel hearts on fire I hear the honest, righteous, beautiful sound Waves of truth sweeping up the liars Grounded in this world Keep a view from all high Up above, look down at one earth One people everyone. I'm the Reverend Susan Sahusky brown I'm the interim minister here at South Church in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Delighted to be here this morning. Though I have no part in this particular worship service, I am so thrilled that it is Music Sunday. What a challenge to be doing music and celebrating music over Zoom, over these virtual platforms. But we have a very talented group. We have a talented music director and uh, director of Ministry of Music, and so we are raring to go. We are glad to have you here, and worship doesn't happen without a lot of people having input and being around and supporting us, and this morning we have a worship associate with us this morning, Brett Newberry. Would you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the rest of the service? Good morning. Good morning. I am Brett Newberry. I am one of the team of worship associates, that works to assist with creating and providing these services each week. I want to thank all those who make this service possible. Uh, our Reverend Susan Brown, um, our Director of LifeScan Span Ministries, Kirsten Hunter, and the rest of our staff who work very hard to make this all possible. Our story today will be brought to, you, to us by Kirsten Hunter and Jen Del Deo. Pip Clues lends her video expertise to making this virtual service possible. And of course, today is Music Sunday. So our sermon will be given by our music director, Joanne Connolly. We all enjoy hearing her as a regular part of our services. She graces South Church with a degree in classical voice and choral conducting and an interest in all forms of singing expression. She joined South Church in 1990 and since then has started two groups, Voices from the Heart and Contubi, that have filled South Church with their music over the last 26 years. 10 years ago, she was asked to be our musical director and we have been blessed by her talent ever since. Joanne? Oh, thank you, Brett. Thanks so much. 
Well, it is Music Sunday, and I always love Music Sunday, but I've never done a virtual Music Sunday. And it's exciting. It's exciting to put it together and to have so many talented people willing to help and contribute. So I just want to mention them. Tim D'Elia, amazing. Tim has worked all summer, actually, to put together our virtual choir for us. Tim is a tenor. He also works with the IT out at Star Island, so he has many connections. Thank you, Tim. We also are so grateful that Theo Wiegand, our choir president, and Greg Birdwood were our sectional leaders helping out this summer, recording the parts, sending them out. Thank you both so much. Susan Adams, our talented pianist. And for this special Sunday, we have two special guest musicians, local singer-songwriter Joyce Anderson singing one of her own compositions, and Matt Jensen, professor at Berklee College of Music in Boston and great jazz and reggae player to accompany me on the postlude. It's going to be quite a lineup of music, and I can't wait to get started with you here this morning. Thanks for being here. Brett, anything else? So welcome again, one and all, to our South Church virtual service. Thank you for sharing this time with us. We invite everyone, first time visitors and long time members to join us for our virtual social hour immediately after services. You can ask que any questions you have, reflect on the service or enjoy the camaraderie. The link is on the South Church Facebook page or in our weekly email. And now we will take a few moments for announcements. Altars of Remembrance, a virtual Vespers service to celebrate the lives of ancestors and loved ones who have gone before us, will take place on Thursday, October 29th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. In your home, you'll create a simple altar in any style or tradition meaningful to you on which to place photographs and personal mementos. Our service will include readings, music, and an opportunity to share aloud remembrances and stories of your loved ones. The Zoom link can be found in your Sunday morning email, or you can reach out to Ann Deminoff at the underscore dem at comcast.net. Have you been wanting to get involved, make a contribution, or would like more of a sense of belonging at South Church? Our associates programs are in need of some associates in particular, our pastoral and social justice programs. If you are interested, please reach out to Laura Montville, the convener of Shared Ministry, at lauramontville at gmail.com. And finally, all South Church friends are invited to carve a pumpkin at home and send a photo for South Church's annual pumpkin carving contest. Entries are due by midnight on Thursday, October 29th, and voting will take place from 10 a.m. on Friday, October 30th until 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 31st. And there will be prizes. Join us for winning results and a monster mash dance party on Zoom from 7 to 7.30 on Halloween night. Please send your photos to Jen Del Deo at southchurch-uu.org. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. Going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. All kinds of people around the table. All kinds of people around the table. One of these days, hallelujah. All kinds of people around the table. Gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. Let us 
sing. Sing to the power of the same. Hope within. Now let us sing. Sing to the power of the same. Hope within. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the hope within. Now let us sing. Sing to the power of the same. Now let us sing. Sing to the power of the same. Love within. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the love within. Now let us sing, sing to the power of the joy within. Now let us sing, sing to the power of the joy within. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the joy within. Good morning once again. One of my personal heroes, Albert Einstein, once said, if I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. I often think in music. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. Smart words. I certainly wish I was more of a musician. Music is a great connector. Like the call of an animal that is recognized all across the species and across boundaries, music is recognized all across humanity as something that connects us all. It also creates a connection to emotions. I have strong emotional connections to certain pieces of music. One such piece of music that stirs a strong connection to me is from time spent living with my father in the summers of my youth and teenage years. My father is blind but he also gardens vegetables and beautiful flowers that he selflessly grows, though he cannot see them. To navigate in his gardens, as well as in his house, he has a fancy sound system with speakers strung all over the place that he plays music through so that he can tell where he is based on where he hears the music coming from. With all those speakers strung up all over the house, he certainly can play music very loud. And I think he really enjoyed waking me up when I really would have rather to be sleeping in as a teenager by playing the overture to Phantom of the Opera at early hours and at great volume. He played a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber show tunes, as well as a lot of John Denver. I did not like this music as a child. I also did not like helping him in his garden. I had to help with the weeding and the deciding if the tomatoes were ripe enough to pick or the peas, or the beans, all things that he needed a little bit of sighted help for. And I really just did not like it. Now, many years later, I don't see him much anymore. I've grown up, I have my own children, and bringing small children to see a blind man when those children don't understand that he is blind and puts them underfoot, underfoot is not a great situation. So I just don't get to see him nearly as much as I used to. Well, much to the surprise of my younger self, I now have a garden. And I grow tomatoes. They're one of my favorite things to grow. And while I'm out working in my garden and tending my tomatoes, I can often be heard expressing my connection to my father in the words of John Denver. Plant them in the spring and eat them in the summer. All winter without them's a culinary bummer. I forget all about the sweating and the digging. Every time I go out and pick me a big one. Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? Only two things that money can't buy. That's true love and homegrown tomatoes. And thus, across all time and distance, I will maintain a connection to my father. No matter where I go or he goes, no matter how far apart we drift, I will be singing John Denver in honor of my father. As we light our chalice, you are invited to light your own chalice at home. We light our chalice this morning with the following words attributed to the philosopher Plato. Music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything.
We invite you now to join in reciting our mission statement, as shown on your screen. At South Church, we nurture spiritual growth through worship, learning, and community. We celebrate the worth and dignity of all people, and we inspire one another to act on our faith in the larger community. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to be with you today and to be together to enjoy Music Sunday. It's kind of a bittersweet thing because Music Sunday has been one of those days at church that buzzed with extra energy when we were in our church building. And even for kids who would head downstairs for an RE program, we'd be hearing the rhythms and mu movements of a day spent celebrating music. I remember hearing it on the ceiling above. Mm -hmm. Music is such a special thing. Or maybe it's more accurate to say music is a lot of special things. We thought about that today and in the spirit of Music Sunday, we wanted to take a few minutes to think about all the music in our world. Maybe you can think of some examples too and share them in the chat box as we explore some that came up for Jen and I. Mm. Think about the grand vibrations of an organ playing in the church sanctuary. The deep connection that happens when a chorus sings together in harmony. Arise up in every way. It feels right in my own soul. The sound of unity and strength when a song breaks out during a march for peace and justice. feeling sad or overwhelmed or missing someone, music can help us feel our feelings more deeply. The right song can help us cry and let it all out instead of holding things up inside. Check out this music by a person who was inspired by cricket sounds. He recorded them, slowed them down, and then created this. Music affects our brain too. Science has shown that listening to classical music while you study improves how well you can remember what you're studying. Music affects us on so many levels. We tell each other stories in music. We realize how much we have in common with one another and the ways that we're different too. Music helps us to understand each other more deeply and it opens our hearts to one another. This month, as we think about what it means to listen deeply, try to pay special attention to the music you hear. See if you can listen in a new way. Try to put other things aside when music starts to play. Happy listening. We love you. We miss you. And we'll see you soon.
It is now time for our morning offering to support the good work of our congregation within our church and within our community. Our shared plate this month goes to Seacoast Outright, an organization that supports and advocates for LGBTQ plus youth in the Seacoast area. They provide space and freedom for youth to explore issues related to sexual orientation and gender identity with trained and experienced adults facilitating important conversations. They also provide support to parents and caregivers. And of course, we continue to support our staff and facilities that make this community what it is. You can give via the donate link on our website or by sending a check to 73 Court Street, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Details are on your screen.
There was this boy, his brother, me, a warm summer day, my Nana and Papa sitting on the front porch, my strong mother, and a tragedy. But before that day, there were summers filled with the neighbor kids, a mostly younger and shorter group than I. We had a club, well, we had a few clubs. Of course, there was the 007 Club, which consisted of spying on our neighbors through their windows and taking notes on small pads of paper and crawling in and out of my basement window. You know, that kind of window that hinges at the top and swings open. We would slide ourselves on our bellies backwards and then drop into the basement. There was also the Witches and Fairies Club. The biggest activity there was flying off the front porch over the rose bushes, around the back to the swing set, back and forth, front porch to swing set, all afternoon. The biggest tragedy of that game was the day my younger brother didn't quite clear the rose bushes, and the worst of that was some crying and a lot of scratches from the thorns. But the biggest summer activity club was the clubhouse players. All the neighborhood kids would rehearse plays and songs and then present them to the adults in the Andersons' backyard. At the end of the summer, there were sheets and blankets clothes pinned on a line for a curtain, a short hedge separating the actors from the audience, our families, of course, sitting in lawn chairs that they had brought along, and there was a garage for storing props, costumes, and used as the green room where we would wait for our entrances. And that boy I mentioned, Tommy, he was in the plays too, my age and in my class at school. And of course, like everyone else, a little shorter than I was. I look back now at a photo I have of those kids and a real ragtag bunch of leftover costumes. There was a witch costume from Halloween an elf from Christmas and some Martian synchronized swim outfits. That's for a whole nother sermon. Those kids are all grown now and many with their own kids move to who knows where. But in that photo, that boy Tommy and I stood next to each other, but looking away from each other. When I look at that photo, I feel how much those two liked each other and how very shy they were. We were in the sixth grade. But let's get back to that day I mentioned. As an adult now, looking back, searching through what happened that day with the tragedy, I know there were many scenes. Tommy, single mom alone in the house with her older son, Peter. My mother first on the scene of that tragedy, Tommy, running to our church at the end of our street, pounding on the door to get our minister to come help. I know there were many more, but for me, there were only two scenes. My mother walking up the street to our house with Tommy's third grade sister, Susie, by the hand, saying to me, take Susie in the house, play with her, don't let her come out. I didn't know what had happened, but my mother was telegraphing to me without words that something frightening had happened and I was to be the big girl, rise to the occasion and help without question. The second scene was the last one of the day for me. My family having dinner around our dining room table with Susie, young and oblivious to what had happened, and Tommy, my Tommy, laying on our couch on his back his vacant eyes on the ceiling, not talking or crying, just lying there while we had a somewhat silent dinner. This was my coming of age story, my loss of innocence, how the streets of Colonial and Sherwood Avenues and the homes that made up that neighborhood were no longer a child's safe playground. These streets, Backyards and homes could be a place where an eighth grade boy, Tommy's brother, could take his own life. I was changed that day. My, Tom, my friend Tommy soon moved away, 
and I never saw him again. I put away many of my beloved childhood games and turned my eyes to becoming a teenager. A teenager who no longer had the power of flight or was part of Her Majesty's Secret Service and no longer an actress on a backyard stage. But I did keep singing. I kept singing. My musical life, like my childhood, had its own coming-of-age story when I was in my mid-30s. Until then, I had done everything to pursue music in some traditional and not-so-traditional ways. I had studied classical voice, including singing arias and art songs by day at college, and then Joni Mitchell in coffee houses at night and continued on to sing in and direct musicals, straight plays, and direct choruses. Until my musical coming of age moment. Well, really it was a week long coming of age workshop with a defining moment. I spent a week with Issei Barnwell from Sweet Honey in the Rock, an African-American women's a cappella group you may know. I was one of 50 eager participants, excited to learn songs from this musical legend, Issei Barnwell. We sat in a circle with our leader, and besides her sat George Brandon, an African-American anthropologist. This special week was called Creating Community in the African-American Tradition. We would sing a day of African songs, a day of spirituals, a day of gospel music, and a day of contemporary African-American music. And the last day was given to celebrate all the songs we had sung that week. Issei taught from memory in four parts, sometimes arranging the music as she was so inspired on the spot. We had no written music, no lyrics, just sitting, facing each other, it felt very vulnerable and naked, with nothing to hold on to, but the trust in our teacher and in each other. Our other teacher, George Brandon, told the stories of each song before we sang them. On our second day together, we would sing spirituals. George Brandon told the story of African slaves who would go out into the woods under cover of night to hold secret worship services because they were prohibited to do so by the plantation owners during the day. They would have church, sing songs, and often use the service to share the deep grief of being enslaved, sold away from family, physically punished and degraded. Often, he said, they would bring a large kettle of water, and when their grief became too great and too loud, they would submerge their heads in the water in order to scream and cry and not be heard. We fell suddenly quiet after hearing this. Issei then taught us, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. Gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. We sang it in four part harmony and learned a few verses. In the middle of our singing, a young African-American woman in her 20s began to cry, cried deeply, with loud sobbing and big tears. She collapsed over her legs. The group's immediate reaction was to stop singing. And I know others felt the same as I did. We can't contribute to her grief. Our song felt like too much for her. We stopped. But Issei instructed us, keep singing, and we did. We sang, and the woman cried and cried. And Issei encouraged us to keep singing. And when she was done, when that woman was done crying, and I mean all done, Issei brought the singing to an end. Later that day, she told us, you have to keep singing until the song is all sung out. 
that day and that moment that learning changed my life and changed the course of my musical life that fall I came back to Portsmouth and started my chorus voices from the heart and a few years after that Cantuti and some years after that I became the music director here at South Church because I began to understand the true deep and powerful nature of music that music heals that music deepens understanding that music builds connections beyond the walls of separateness between seemingly opposing ideologies and beliefs across creeds and cultures connecting people with deep love and deep respect. I learned that you need to keep singing and keep singing. How could I keep from singing? Blessed be. Speak for me, 
Speak for me, oh my soul. Speak for me. Speak for me. Speak for me, oh my soul. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Seek music that heals you. Sing songs that deepen you. Embrace music from cultures other than your own. Coming of age is a time of letting go and a time to awaken. Be open to the awakening, that coming of age, again and again, again and again. And keep singing, keep singing. How can you keep from singing? Amen and blessed be. Well, it looks like it might be a hard road. I'm gonna walk it with you And I know you might have a heavy load But I can carry some too I'll lift you up when they push you down I'll raise my voice, stand my ground Well, it looks like it might be a hard road I'm gonna walk it with you Well, it looks like it be a long night, but I ain't going nowhere, and I know it's gonna be a hard fight, but I will stay right here, I'll shine a light in the darkest hour, I will face the man in the tallest town. some ways that you can give to South Church. To make your 2021 pledge, fill out and mail your financial commitment form to South Church at 73 Court Street in Portsmouth, or send an email to the Annual Budget Committee Chair, Lori Bilby, at turningtide at comcast.net. To pay your pledge or to make donations, go to the South Church website, southchurch-uu.org 
click on the donate button on the top and follow the prompts. You can also mail us a check to South Church at 73 Court Street in Portsmouth, noting the type of gift that you are making. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out at 603-436-4762 or by emailing info at southchurch-uu.org.